my photographs and then you put me after a real photographer and now I feel like an idiot. So don't judge my photography skills. So we're going to talk about the great migration of wildebeest in Kenya. And again, I was all proud that I took all the pictures. Now I'm embarrassed about it. But uh, I went to Kenya in this past September and was there for about a week and a half. And part of the reason that we went in September was to see the great migration of wildebeest. And I'll explain what a wildebeest is in a minute because no one knows what it is. But this is called one of the seven new wonders of the world. It's where two million of these things migrate between Tanzania and Kenya. It's the largest animal migration that still happens today. And people from all over the world travel, especially during the time we were there in late summer to go see this. That's just a picture of everywhere you look, these things are are everywhere. And wildebeest are truly extremely ugly creatures. They're not attractive looking at all, but they're really cool to see when there are thousands all around you. So what is a wildebeest? Well, it's a hooved mammal. It's actually a member of the antelope family, but they kind of look like runty moose a little bit. Like they're slightly littler. They have very small legs, but big heads, and they can weigh up to 600 pounds. They're pretty huge. And they're herbivores, and the whole point of the migration is they're constantly on a search for grass. And so where they go is between the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, which is highlighted in yellow, up to the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and that's where I was, and that's uh, marked up there in green. So what they do is they travel from Tanzania, usually starting early in summer, they cross over the Mara River, which is like the border between the two countries, and they eventually go in a big clockwise route. So overall, they travel about 1,000 miles, and this is continuous. They're always on the move, but during that specific time period, late summer, early fall, is when they're going from Tanzania into Kenya, and that's when it's easy for tourists to see. So that's what we kind of call the Great Migration, even though, honestly, it's kind of always happening. So why do they migrate? What's going on? Well, it actually has to do with uh, the rains in the Serengeti. After it rains, as they get their wet season, they're basically on a search for grass. And so they travel again from Tanzania over to Kenya. They eat up all the grass, and then they go back again. Unfortunately, a lot of them never make it because it's a very dangerous trek for the wildebeest, which is kind of the exciting part to see is when they get attacked by lions and stuff like that. So that's the morbid part. Uh, it's a huge, like I said, huge tourist attraction. Hundreds of thousands of people go to see it. The major way to see it is in the little minivans, safari vans, which is what we did. Spending like 10 hours a day in those things can be a little hard at times. They have the pop-up tops and you stand up. The other way to see it is through the hot air balloon. That's the one picture I didn't take because I absolutely will not go in a hot air balloon. Couldn't pay me to do it, no way. But uh, a lot of people do that, which obviously, as you can tell, is a cool way. And that's actually, those are all wildebeest and that's a line of zebra sort of leading the wildebeest. So it's actually a cool way if you're not afraid of a hot air balloon, which I am, but it'd be a neat way to go see it. Uh, during the migration, it's more than just wildebeest. A lot of wildlife travel along with the wildebeest. There are the peaceful ones, like the giraffe and the elephant, which travel along with them too. All the animals sort of do it together because it's safety and numbers against the predators, and that's a um, cheetah attacking a gazelle, which happened right in front of our safari van. It was actually really cool to see it up close. And um, I know it sounds morbid, but it's really cool. I know. I'll I'll show you a video later if you want. Um, and zebras are probably the number one animal that go along with the wildebeest because zebras are also major prey for the predators there. Lions and leopards and cheetah prey on the um, zebras, so they track along with the wildebeest too. So not only are you seeing the wildebeest, but you're seeing thousands of zebra as well. Uh, vultures also follow along too. This is a still from a video I shot. You can kind of tell those are birds eating a dead wildebeest, which is gross, so I didn't zoom in or anything. But it's a major source of the food of the birds there. So the wildebeest not only are they looking for grass, but they're a big source of food for other animals as well. Now, the biggest spectacle of all is when they cross the Mara River. This typically happens June and July. As they're crossing, they're basically a giant feast for the crocodiles in the Mara River. And it's like this bloodbath, like you'd see on the sci-fi channel, like the giant crocs attacking the wildebeest. And here's, I took this snapshot from this, uh, it was the only other one I didn't take, from National Geographic, but so that is your crocodile eating a, um, a wildebeest, and I love the one that's jumping above it. Like, those suckers can jump, even though they're 600 pounds and have little legs. They'll leap and whatever, but so they have to get over the river with the giant crocodile in order to get over to the Maasai Mara and eat the grass. So it's a very dangerous trek. Now, once they're there, and again, that's where we did our safari in Kenya, the Maasai Mara is the best known reserve there. 
It's basically all hills and grassland, very pretty area. Again, lots, lots for the uh, wildebeest to graze on. And it also has the largest population of lions in Africa. Lions are everywhere there. And that's one of the shots that we took there of some of the, one of the fam lions that was part of a bigger family. Uh, there's also the cheetahs and the leopards, like I mentioned before. There's that picture again of the one attacking the gazelle. So again, the wildebeest, it's like, it really is a, a life and death trek for them. Mm -hmm. They're migrating because they have to, to find the grass, but all along the way, they're fighting obstacles. So it really is like very, you know, you feel like, yes, I'm one with nature, and it's really kind of cool. There I am in that hot, hot uh, little safari van, and there's the wildebeest out the window as I watch them. Uh, so if you ever want to do it, I highly recommend it. I know it's, it's not a trip I ever would have taken either, but I'm so glad that I did it. It was amazing to see, definitely once in a lifetime to be there. There's a lot to consider though you have to think about what season you want to be there again to see the migration you want to be there usually in the dry months like july to october when they're moving but the lodges are pretty busy when we were there it was packed with tourists from all over the world and also you got to think about location whether you'd rather be down in tanzania or up in kenya and what time of the year you're going to go for that also you have to think about what kind of accommodations you want you can stay in the safari hotels which have electricity they have running water they're actually pretty nice a lot of them have internet too which was really nice or you can stay in the luxury lodges, which are the tented accommodations. And actually, that's what all the rich people do is they stay like in the tent. So clearly, I stayed in the safari hotel, not the tented accommodation. But the tents is really sort of the desired one. They're air conditioned. They're really nice. I, don't, I liked a hotel. I wanted to feel like I was under a solid roof. So, so anyway, again, it's one of the great natural spectacles on Earth. It's an amazing sight to see. I highly recommend you go. And that's it. We love the wildebeest. Save the wildebeest. <laughs>